depend on when we get to the post-COVID world and in what kind of format. There are multiple vaccines being trialled and tested all around the world. And I think the expectation is that one or more of those will work and pass all the regulatory requirements. But the process of rolling out mass testing on a scale that covers large parts, if not the whole global population, will take time. So a lot will depend on when we get to that point. And clearly, as the weather starts to turn colder in the northern hemisphere, uh, the preponderance towards other diseases like flu may change uh, the virus too. So I think a lot will depend on the decisions that get made in individual countries and across regional groupings of countries about how cooperation works so that economies can be kick-started. Um, the global economy is obviously under considerable pressure and a lot will depend on the willingness and the ability of groupings of countries, of which Carrick is a prime example, are able to use this as an opportunity to move forward in their collaboration and cooperation to work through uh, getting the economy back on its, uh, on its feet. The point of, of regional groupings is to encourage um, closer integration, higher levels of cooperation, uh, more levels of information sharing. Uh, and what tends to happen when groups function successfully is that they all tend to produce the same kinds of outcomes, usually very positive ones, when one works on trying to uh, harmonize standards and to improve border crossings and so on, uh, inevitably there are there can be very substantial gains for productivity. So I think it's very important in post-COVID to accentuate the role of regional groups. These are important under any circumstances, but particularly at a time when um, some cardiac therapy needs to be given to, uh, to across regions where, where quite dramatic interventions uh, are being done at a domestic level. This gives a real opportunity, I think, for, for CARIC to, um, to, to, to speed up the collaboration and cooperation that's already been successful in the past. Crisis and resilience are very closely linked. I mean, this is not the first time that there have been major diseases that have spread across through CARIC countries, and in fact, globally. But one of the key elements and one of the key takeaways from the last eight or nine months has been the importance of information sharing, the importance of cooperation at both at va vaccine levels, but in terms of, of how states share and work and find common standards that, that allow them to both lock down but also to reopen up again. So uh, one of the key elements, I think, about CAREC is to look beyond uh, just transport infrastructure and energy, but to be thinking about how other forms of cooperation across the group can help. And I think healthcare um, is a very important part of that, notwithstanding COVID, that would have been key. But I think there's a real impetus to think through healthcare collaboration and also other forms of softer ways in which uh, groups like the ADB can be helping CARIC countries find other ways of cooperating where uh, resilience and crisis can be mitigated in the future. Inevitably, countries tend to look at their domestic situation first and in that world, looking at co cooperation with neighbours and with regional neighbours, um, it can seem that that's not so much of a priority. But I think in this particular case, uh, what's key is to be trying to stand back and look at the big picture. So to move away from just looking at the domestic agenda, but to see how uh, regional trade, uh, regional infrastructure cooperation can help uh, can help that domestic position too. So one of the things that is so so central right now and important, and we'll talk about in the meeting, is about harmonisation of documentation, uh, lowering uh, times for, and waits for border crossings. And some of these things, which are logistically and technically not too difficult, can produce uh, very substantial gains for domestic and regional economies. So I think a lot, a lot of it really is about how one chooses to focus and how one has a hierarchy of what really matters and as a global historian, someone who looks at the big picture, stepping away from individual countries and looking at groups, uh, it's clear to me that in the past, there have been many cases and many times where these kinds of lowering of, uh, of um, abilities and wait times, finding ways to facilitate trade have led to very substantial upswings at local level, at regional level, and in fact, even at global level too. <laughs> When we think about history and when we think about our national histories, we always start with home, wherever that might be, whichever individual country in the Carrick region or any country in the world. And that sometimes makes it difficult for us to see the big picture because we tend not to be looking at things that are happening hundreds or even thousands of miles away. But one of the big themes across Carrick countries in particular is about looking back at the histories of the Silk Roads 
and seeing that uh, there's never a moment where one country does well or one people does well or one culture does well and others do less well. There tend to be these big waves that everybody does well together and everybody fails together. So there have been all sorts of rhythms in history, lots of explanations about what prompts these rises and falls, but typically high levels of integration, high levels of cooperation, low levels of border tariffs, enabling goods to move quickly from one side of the world to the other, stimulates a global economy, but also stimulates very significantly at regional local levels too. Equally, when things start to go wrong in one or more locations, that has a concertina effect that affects everybody. So the region really does rise and fall together. And I think that's a very important lesson to be thinking about, even without COVID, but especially because of the pandemic, that we should be thinking about ways in which these countries can all co collaborate and work together in order to not just get back up and running, but to find a real platform for facilitating and improving collaboration uh, across the board going forwards. And if that happens, I think when one looks at the population sizes, the gross domestic products of individual countries, also the kinds of problems that many countries have that are also in common, I think there are all sorts of ways in which the needle can be moved very dramatically towards improvement of capital flows, improvement of living standards, improvement of all of the kind of metrics that all of you will be looking at anyway to try to improve the lives of all the citizens in countries individually and also collectively.